guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're all doing great today. The autopilot. How does it work and does the autopilot fly the plane? At the end of this video, you know the answers to those questions and you'll also be able to operate the autopilot yourself. Only if you pay attention, of course. <laughs> so before we continue, I'd like to share the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. I'm so happy to work with them again as I feel like their service is perfect for people like me who have little time left to actually sit down and grab a book. So instead of trying to find time to read an entire book, you can also just listen to all its highlights in only 15 minutes while doing laundry, going to the supermarket or driving to work, you name it. Blinkist allows you to save time and learn new things faster than ever. You can use it to learn more about self-improvement, leadership, entrepreneurship, and many more areas. Last year during my holidays, I read so many books again. And one of the books I think you should definitely read, or I think everyone should definitely read, is uh, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. It's only uh, 26 minutes. And another one is uh, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing by Robert Kiyosaki. It's 16 minutes as well, while the actual book takes you way longer to read. And if you feel like you also want to listen to these books during your commute towards work, the seven day trial is completely free and you can cancel anytime during that period. Click on the link in the description box if you're interested. The first 100 people will get a 25% off the full membership. Let's start with why. Why is there an autopilot in the first place? Well, the autopilot is designed to enhance operational capabilities, improve safety, reduce workload and improve comfortability. The autopilot improves comfortability because at altitudes like flight level 380, where air density is so low, the tiniest movement of the controls causes the plane to climb or descend. Imagine being a passenger sitting in the back of the plane, bumping from left to right, up and down. I mean, for sure you'll need a couple of sick bags. The autopilot also increases safety because it reduces workload. Pilots can focus on monitoring the systems, perform fuel checks, planning ahead and focus on potential threats rather than concentrating 11 hours on keeping the plane straight and level. To clarify this to people who don't understand, imagine driving a car for 11 hours straight without having a single brake. Everyone understands that that's not safe. And in this case, we're talking about a simple vehicle like a car. Imagine flying a plane for 11 hours with 200 people on board, of which you are responsible of. I guess the point is clear. The autopilot is there for several important reasons. Let's continue with some history. The first autopilot on the Boeing 737 was the Sperry 77. This autopilot was super basic and only consisted of a pitch and roll computer. There was no such thing as auto throttle or in layman's terms, automatic gas. Sperry's autopilots became popular during the 1920s and 30s. And after the war, commercial flights became more popular, which increased the demand for automation. In the 1950s, commercial planes had five crew members in the cockpit. A flight engineer, a ro radio operator, <laughs> a flight engineer, a radio operator, a navigator, and two pilots. In the next 20 to 30 years, automation and improved technology made the first three jobs unnecessary, which saved airline companies a lot of money. So when do pilots use the autopilot? During the entire flight? No. During the most critical phases of flight, such as taxi, takeoff and landing, the autopilot is not engaged. Pilots are flying the plane manually, so by hand. After takeoff, the autopilot on the Boeing 737 is never engaged below 400 feet above ground level. And many times the pilots actually fly the plane manually until the seatbelt signs switches are turned off. Of course, this totally depends on the company procedures and circumstances like weather, workload, etc. Only under specific circumstances, the autopilot is used for landing, also called autoland. And those circumstances are when the visibility is so bad that you cannot even see the runway the moment you are about to touch the landing zone with your landing gear. Only then an automatic landing or autoland is made. And apart from this, an automatic landing in bed visibility can only be made when winds do not exceed a certain limit. 
maximum 25 knots headwind, 20 knots crosswind and 50 knots tailwind. Whenever the winds at the airport exceed this limit and the visibility is about zero, an automatic landing cannot be made and pilots will need to hold until weather conditions improve or divert to another airport. So how does the autopilot work? Before we continue to the part where we actually start pressing buttons, I'll tell you a little bit more about the system itself. The autoflight system, or as many people call it, the autopilot, consists of the autopilot flight director system and the autotrottle. Pilots can control the autoflight system with the mode control panel, thrust levers, control display units and control columns. Autopilot A and B are driven by two separate hydraulic systems. Two flight control computers control the autopilot by inputs from the mode control panel, flight management computer, autotrottle, control column and autopilot actuator position. The inputs that these flight control computers receive are used to create flight director commands and drive the right flight control actuator. Whether any input from the pilot is actually working can be seen on the flight mode enunciator on the primary flight display. This works exactly like women, guys. You can press all kinds of buttons, but if there's no change, it means that whatever you're doing is wrong. Now that I have your attention again, let's dive a little bit deeper into this. The mode control panel is located on the glare shield panel, which contains the master caution lights uh, and enunciators, fire warning lights, and the EFIS control panel. You can split the MCP into four sections, the speed control, lateral navigation, vertical navigation, and the engage and disengage switches. Let's start with speed control. The speed controls are primarily used to command the autotrottles when the autotrottle system is armed. The speed selected in the airspeed window is maintained when the speed switch is pressed and verified. Located to the left of the speed switch is the N1 switch. It is used to command the autotrottles to hold a specific N1 speed. N1 speed is the speed of the turbine engines as a percentage of the maximum normal RPM. Pressing the changeover switch causes the speed to toggle between indicated airspeed and Mach airspeed. The airspeed automatically toggles to Mach above 26,000 feet. The speed intervention switch controls the speed while operating in VNAV, which is a path defined by the FMC. By pressing the speed intervention switch, it opens the speed window and the pilot can adjust the speed via this window. Let's continue with lateral navigation. A heading can be set in the heading window by using the heading selector. The heading mode is engaged by pressing the heading select switch and the four lock and approach switches direct the autopilot to capture and follow signals from the VHF navigation radios. These are the buttons you will need when you fly a precision or non-precision approach. And nowadays they actually call it a 2 or 3D approach. The courses for VHF navigation are set on the MCP panel by rotating the course selectors. The LNAV switch is used to intercept and track an active route defined by the FMC. This means that you could press the heading select switch whenever you need to circumnavigate around a cloud or request it by ATC. If you want to follow the routing you've programmed in the FMC after that, you select the next waypoint, press LNAV, execute, and that also means that if you do not program anything or the routing you programmed is wrong, LNAV is not an option. The vertical navigation modes command the autoflight system to control the airplane's pitch. A desired altitude is set by rotating the altitude selector until the altitude is displayed in the altitude display window on the PFD, the primary flight display. There are many ways to climb or descend, but one of the easiest ways is by pressing the button level change. If a specific vertical speed is desired or ATC asks for it uh, because they want to maintain an, a certain separation, you can also use the vertical speed wheel. Rotating the vertical speed wheel sets the desired rate. The VNAV switch commands the autopilot flight director system to follow a vertical path defined by the FMC. This can be VNAV path or VNAV speed, but pay attention. <laughs> a slight deviation from this path due to a shortcut, different winds or different routing can cause you to be high or lower than you should be. Also, when VNAV is not able to maintain its path with a specific speed, it will revert to VNAV speed. 
And in Venus speed, the pitch controls the airspeed and rate of climb or descent and is controlled by thrust. And in the worst case, this means that the plane will never be able to catch its path because of a high speed and will always be higher on its profile. One of the last things you want is coming in hot and high. A simple solution for that can be adjusting the speed in the descent page of the FMC or by using the speed brake. Otherwise, if you're still high, one of the fastest ways to descend is by selecting level change, a speed of 310 knots in combination with speed brakes. Another VNAV mode is VNAV ALT, which is when the aircraft reaches the altitude on the MCP panel, but not in the FMC. The ALT intervention switch is used when operating in VNAV. The autopilot flight director switches are used to engage or disengage the auto flight functions. Two flight director switches are located on the mode control panel and each controls their flight directors. When the switch is on, the flight director commands bars are shown on the primary flight display. Command A engages autopilot A, command B engages autopilot B. When the captain is flying, he or she engages command A and when the first officer is flying, he will command he will engage command B. The autopilot system can also be operated in the control wheel steering mode. The control wheel steering uh, mode is activated automatically when there is force on the control column uh, with the autopilot engaged or when there is no other mode selected. One of the ways to disengage the autopilot is by pulling down the disengage bar. Pulling down this bar exposes a yellow background and disengages the autopilot. The master flight director is determined by which flight director is turned on first. MA illuminating above the captain's flight director switch indicates that flight control computer A is controlling the flight directors and that the captain will be flying that leg. The opposite is also true. Now that you know more about the mode control panel and the different buttons, we can talk a little bit more about the flight management computer, the FMC. The flight management computer provides N1 limits, target N1 for out of throttle and commands airspeed for the autotrottle and autopilot flight director system. Normally, the autopilot flight director system and autotrottle are controlled automatically by the FMC to fly a optimized lateral and vertical path through climb, cruise and descent. Do you remember what we said about the flight mode enunciator? It's one of the key elements of flying with the autopilot, as those FMAs will tell the pilots exactly what's going on and in which mode it's currently flying. We press LNAV on the MCP and call out the LNAV we see on the FMA, which is a green box with letters LNAV. Green letters means it has been engaged, while white letters means it has been armed. And the first FMA column displays the auto total mode, the second one the roll mode, and the third one the pitch mode. So knowing all of this, does the autopilot fly the plane? Well, the autopilot is a tool used to fly a plane, but the autopilot is not a consciousness or neural brain learning from its mistakes and handling accordingly. When the pilot does not direct the autopilot specifically through all the possible ways that we just described or that we just discussed, nothing happens. Simply because we're not touching the control column doesn't mean that we pilots are not flying the plane. I hope that makes sense. So a question for you. Is the autopilot on the Boeing 737 what you thought it was? And do you know any differences between the autopilot on the Boeing versus autopilot on the Airbus? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope you learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching and check out my Instagram for posts and stories about my life as an airline pilot. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing to this Dutch Pilot Girl channel if you want to see more of these kind of videos. Clicking the notification bell will ensure you never miss out any of my other videos. And I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.